join us in singing, You Are Loved. Empower us with your Holy Spirit to 
serve others with love, especially those who cannot repay us. May our acts of service reflect your heart and magnify your presence in the world. Guide us today as we seek to embody your grace and share your love through our mission and ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and dance and clap and sing and be all together joyous <laughs> as we sing, I've got the joy, joy, joy. <laughs>
chose us. How to do our best. How to do our best. By asking for and accepting. By asking for and accepting. Your help. Your help. Stand as we sing hymn number 598, The Word of God Incarnate. And this is a little less familiar, I'll play through one time. First. Instead of doing those things, 
These persons love the Lord's instruction, and they recite God's instruction day and night. They are like a tree replanted by streams of water, which bears fruit at just the right time, and whose leaves don't fade. Whatever they do succeeds. That's not true for the wicked. They are like dust that the wind blows away. And that's why the wicked will have no standing in the court of justice. Neither will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The Lord is intimately acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is destroyed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We stand as we sing hymn number 530, Are Ye Able?
traveling through Galilee. Knowing his time within his shorts, Jesus prepares for what is ahead by once again telling them that he will be betrayed, killed, and rise again on the third day. The disciples don't understand and are afraid to ask. Instead, they get distracted by something else, arguing about who among them <coughs> is the greatest. Jesus is talking about his impending death and resurrection, but the disciples are worried about their status and position. When they arrive at the house at Corona, Jesus asks, what were you arguing about on the road? Embarrassed, they fall silent. Who would want to admit to Jesus that they were focused on something so trivial in the shadow of all that he had been talking about. Rather than rebuke them, Jesus uses this moment to teach them a lesson on true greatness. He says, whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. Then to drive the point home, Jesus places a child among them, a symbol of low status in that culture. He says, whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. In this moment, Jesus flips their understanding of greatness. It's not about rising to the top, but humbling ourselves to serve. <laughs> True greatness in God's kingdom isn't found in power or prestige, but in service to those who can't repay us. Today, we'll explore how serving others directly connects to receiving blessings. The path to joy and transformation isn't in being first or best, but being a servant. Through giving of our time, resources, and love, we find the greatest reward is the joy of serving others in the name of Jesus. Along with our scripture, we'll also reflect on some insights from Kathy Escobar's book, Practicing, Changing Ourselves to Change the World, focusing on chapter 6, The Practice of Advocating, as we discover that service is not just a task, but a pathway to joy and reflection of our calling as followers of Christ. Our reading today comes from chapter 9 of Mark, verses 30 through 37. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the word. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he didn't want anyone to know it. This was because he was teaching his disciples, the human one will be delivered into human hands. They will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. But they didn't understand this kind of talk, and they were afraid to ask him. They entered Capernaum. When they had come into a house, he asked them, What were you arguing about during the journey? They didn't respond, since on the way they had been debating with each other about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embraced him. Then he said, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
may be seated. Jesus turns the world's idea of greatness upside down, saying whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. In this simple yet profound statement, Jesus teaches his disciples and us that the path to true greatness is not found in power, prestige, or position. Instead, it is found in serving others with humility, especially those who can never repay us. In its purest form, service is an act of love and humility. It's about setting aside our own ambitions and agendas to focus on the needs of others. When we serve this way, we are not just fulfilling a duty, but living out the heart of the gospel. The act of serving is itself both a blessing and a reward. We find joy, purpose, and a deeper connection to God through it. Jesus knew this, so he continually modeled a life of service, washing his disciples' feet, healing the sick, and welcoming the outcast. In her book, Practicing, Changing Ourselves to Change the World, Escobar expands on this by highlighting the practice of advocating. She says advocacy is a profound way of serving others, especially the marginalized or silenced. When we advocate for those without a voice, we embody Christ's heart and align ourselves with God's deep concern for justice and mercy. Advocacy is not just about speaking up. It is about standing in solidarity with those in need, giving them dignity and helping to create more than a more just world. The beauty of serving others, especially through advocacy, is that it blesses us as much as those as who we help. Advocating for the poor, the sick, the refugee, or anyone in need transforms us. Knowing that we are participating in God's work of bringing justice, healing, and peace to the world brings deep joy. It is a joy that goes beyond any earthly reward, a peace that fills our hearts when we know we have made a difference, however small. In Mark 9.35, Jesus turns the world's idea of greatness upside down, saying, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. In that culture, children had no social standing, no power, and no status. They were the least important members of society. Yet Jesus elevates their value. He tells the disciples that welcoming and caring for those who cannot offer anything in return is like welcoming him and by extension, welcoming God. This powerful image speaks to the heart of what it means to serve and advocate to those who are marginalized. In her sixth chapter, Escobar reinforces this message by highlighting the importance of advocating for the least in our society. She points out that when we stand up for the vulnerable, the oppressed, and the marginalized, we aren't simply performing a good deed. We are encountering Christ himself. As Jesus teaches, advocacy is not just a social obligation, but a spiritual act that transforms both the persons being served and the one serving. Jesus welcoming children always makes me think of things like camp in the community. Hosting this event doesn't seem to offer any reward. Yet, the joy of ministry is not found in recognition or reward, but in the simple act of loving and welcoming those who cannot repay us. Serving others becomes a profound tool for transformation, 
bringing us closer to the heart of Jesus and filling us with the joy that only comes from living out the gospel. In the context of ministry, our work, whether feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, or advocating for justice, it is not just good deeds, but a reflection of God's heart at work through us. In our Tuesday Bible study, we have been using Tom Berlin's book, Courage, Jesus and the Call to Brave Faith. In the first chapter, I thought there was a powerful reminder that applies to our message today. Tom says, When a person is clear that he or she serves the larger purposes of God in the world, that person also gains the trust that she or he is empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so. This is why time spent in spiritual disciplines like prayer, study of scripture, worship, or silence is essential to this task. We are far more likely to undertake necessary, courageous actions when we return in the power of the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit has directed in our lives. Tom's words echo Jesus' call to service and humility. He reminds us that spiritual disciplines like prayer, study, and worship help us draw strength from the Holy Spirit to fulfill God's work. Our acts of service, great or small, are empowered by the Holy Spirit and directed by God's purposes. This work, Berlin says, is your magnificence. You are magnifying the presence of God through the efforts of your life that it, the, your life directs. Take a moment to reflect on the main thing you believe is your magnificence. Here are some examples Tom lists in his book. Caring for my parents is my magnificence. Building a business that serves the community and our employees will be my magnificence. Helping our town expand affordable housing will be my magnificence. Learning how to raise our children well will be my magnificence. Refurbishing the park in our neighborhood will be my magnificence. Being a better friend will be my magnificence. Finding a new job where I can best use my training will be my magnificence. Helping my students to read at grade level will be my magnificence. Joining others to renew our church is my magnificence. As we move into October, we will begin to think and dream about the new year and our commitments here at Green Meadow. So begin asking yourself, what is God calling me to magnify this coming year? How will you magnify the presence of God through your service, your advocacy, and your commitment to the larger purposes of God? By embracing your calling, no matter how small or large it may seem, you are engaging in the joyful work of magnifying God's presence in the world, just as Jesus taught his disciples to serve and welcome others in his name. As we have seen today, serving others is at the very heart of the gospel. Jesus teaches that true greatness comes not from power or prestige, but from humbling ourselves to serve those in need. When we serve, especially those who cannot repay us, we, are experience, we experience profound blessings and joy. Whether through acts of advocacy or simple gestures of kindness, service transforms not only those we help, but also our own hearts drawing us closer to Christ. When we step into the work of ministry, we encounter the presence of Jesus in powerful ways. 
Our mission and ministry here at Green Meadow has touched countless lives. It has touched lives here in our community through our donations of peanut butter to the Community Food Connection of Blount County, with Meals on Wheels through the Lucille Cassidy Fund, Family Promise, lunches through the Salvation Army, hosting camp in the community, hosting Cub Scouts and 12-step groups. It touches beyond our community through supporting Wesley Woods, the Wesley Foundation, Susanna's House, Faithful Men, our ministry outreach to the Nuba Mountain region, and food buckets we put together for the schools in Zimbabwe. These acts of service are worth celebrating. Through these acts of service, we have become a living reflection of God's love in our church, our community, and the larger world. As we leave today, I challenge each of you to consider how you can continue to serve in your own life. Ask yourself, where can I offer my time, my resources, or my heart to make a difference? Whether through advocacy, outreach, or simply helping in a moment of need, let your service be a pathway to joy, transformation, and the magnification of God's presence in the world. Together, let us commit to being a church that embodies the joy of serving, reflecting, magnifying the love of Christ in all we do. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you today grateful for your presence in our lives and for the many blessings you have given us. In a world often driven by power and status, you remind us that true greatness is found in serving one another with humility and love. Help us, Lord, to follow the example of Jesus, who knelt to wash the feet of his disciples, who welcomed the least and the lost, and who gave his life for us all. We lift up before you those in need of your grace and mercy today. For the lonely and forgotten, may they feel your comfort and presence. For the sick and suffering, may they receive your healing peace. For those facing difficult decisions of challenges, grant them wisdom and strength. And for the vulnerable and oppressed, Help us to stand with them, advocating for justice, mercy, and compassion. Lord, we ask for your guidance as we seek to be your servants in the world. Open our eyes to see those who need our help. Open our hearts to respond with kindness and love. Fill us with the courage to act, knowing in, that in serving others, we are serving you. Bless this community of faith that we may be a reflection of your love and grace. Unite us in our mission to share your light in the world through acts of service, words of encouragement, and hearts filled with compassion. May your spirit guide us as we strive to make a difference, both here in our church and beyond its walls. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to give our tithes and offering, let us remember that giving is an act of worship, a reflection of our gratitude for all that God has provided. Through our gifts, we participate in God's mission, supporting the ministries of the church, reaching to those in need, and making a difference. Will the usher please come?
Holy God, we ask that you bless these gifts we give back to you for the building of your kingdom. Amen.
great garden, we are like trees planted by the streams of water that yield their fruit in season and prosper in you. We are grateful for all that you have provided, and we dedicate our first fruits to you and to the work of your church, now and forever. Amen. joys with you this morning. Uh, Diane's granddaughter is, Diane and David's granddaughter, is two years old today, Hannah, and um, she was born less than five pounds, but now she's healthy and strong, and so we give praise. She's London, right. Carol Green gives praise for her brother Doug's uh, move to Liberty Assisted Living, his, as she's been calling his forever home. So he settled in, Carol, and good. That's good news. Uh, and she thanks our church for welcoming him so warmly um, when he's been able to be with us. We have several prayer requests. Uh, we need to remember Judy Lovely is traveling for the next couple of weeks uh, on a bus tour to New England, so we want to remember her. And um, Karen is traveling to Cincinnati, I think, this weekend, so remember them. And Bob is returning from a trip, Nancy, so we want to remember, have travel mercies for these folks. Uh, Chuck asks for prayer for the faithful men they're seeing at 6 tonight at Four Mile Baptist Church. That's down the road, piece. I know where that is. <laughs> okay. um, no, that'll be a blessing for them. And then Carol has a prayer request. Uh, Chris and Aaron are flying from well, Istanbul to Brooklyn. And travel mercies for them. That's a little farther than Four Mile Baptist Church. So <laughs> I want to remember those folks. And then we have a special prayer request for Kenny Walker, who is Dennis Walker's younger brother. Two weeks ago, after a day on the golf course near his home in Cape Cod, he became extremely ill. He was hospitalized and immediately put in intensive care. His condition worsened, and he was taken by hospital, uh, to a hospital in Boston, and he was diagnosed he had been bitten by a mosquito carrying the West Nile virus. He's been fighting for his life and has been determined that he cannot survive. His wife and three young adult children have been by his side continuously. Fortunately, he was aware enough to allow his six siblings this extremely difficult opportunity to say their final heartfelt goodbyes by phone. At this time, he is still alive, but they humbly ask for our prayers for his peaceful passing and comfort for his family. Let us take a time and remember also the prayer list that tends to grow uh, through the green sheet in our bulletin. And let's take a moment of silent prayer for each of these, plus others that are on our heart. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our hurts, you know our fears. You know us by name. We call upon the Holy Spirit to touch the hearts that are hurting this morning. We call upon the Holy Spirit to remind us that we are each special and these needs that are so important to us are heard by you. We ask for your strength for those on these on our prayer requests and for us as we minister to those. Amen. Please stand as we 
we sing the closing hymn number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Another, our 
church, our community, our nation, and our world. As you leave our sanctuary, remember to greet those around you with the love of Christ. May the joy of serving fill your hearts. And may you be strengthened by God's grace to live out your calling this week. As you go from this place, may you carry the light of Christ into the world, serving with humility, loving with compassion, and advocating for those in need. May the joy of serving fill your heart, and may you be empowered by the Holy Spirit to live out your calling with courage and grace. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen.